Hi friends, Justin Hibbert here, host of the Why Catholic podcast with a frequently asked Catholic question in which I try to answer in about five minutes or less. Today's Catholic question is, do Catholics believe in a works-based salvation? Now the short answer is no, Catholics do not believe in a works-based salvation. But now let me give you the longer answer. You know, Protestants often accuse Catholics of believing in works-based salvation because Catholics believe that uh, things like baptism, uh, confession, the Eucharist, confirmation, sacraments are part of that salvation process. We do believe that baptism is the first step of salvation. And we believe this because the Bible says so. Uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, uh, he said that no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he is born of water and the spirit. And in first Peter, Peter tells us that baptism now saves you. So these are some of the reasons why we believe that baptism is part of that salvation process. So this leads Protestants to set to um, accuse Catholics of believing in a workspace salvation because they say, well, you need to do the work of baptism. So therefore, in order to be saved, so therefore you believe in a workspace, uh, workspace salvation. The answer to that question or the response to that is that you're that those people who say this really misunderstand and really oversimplify the nature of sacraments and what we believe about sacraments. So the word sacrament has two etymological components. It comes from the Latin word sacramentum, which means sacred oath. It also comes from the Greek word mysterium, which means mystery. So a sacrament contains two parts, the sacred oath and a mystery. When I participate in a, in a sacrament, I'm making a sacred oath and in return receiving a mystery. Let me give you a couple of examples. So in uh, when I re, when I take holy communion, I am making an oath. I am walking forward and saying yes to God. And in turn, there's a great mystery that happens. We believe that the bread and the wine become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Now, the other thing is in confession. In confession, I tell God I'm sorry for my sins and I promise to do better and try not to sin again. I'm making a sacred oath and in turn, God is washing away my sins and cleansing me of all unrighteousness. Those are mysteries. And the reason we call them mysteries is because we don't know why God chooses this mechanism to do these things. We don't know why he chooses water for baptism, but he does. And we don't know exactly how it works. We can explain it to some extent and explain the theology about uh, behind it. But at the end of the day, we say it's a mystery, right? We can't explain it to its fullest. We can't understand it to its fullest. And that's okay. We call it a mystery. And so when we take these sacred oaths. This is not a work in the sense of like a charity or like when I give to charity or I help someone out. This is a sacred oath. It's an act of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, we read about the faith heroes who took these acts of faith, right? In the same way, we are saying yes to God when we participate in a sacrament and we are receiving, and this is the biggest part, the mystery of God, right? The, the, the part that I do pales in comparison to the part that Jesus does to us. And so these sacraments become a conduit of God's grace. They, the way that we enter into God's grace and receive that grace. Ephesians 2 tells us, for we are saved by grace through what? Through faith. And so in the same way, I walk through this, this sacrament by faith and receive God's grace. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube. I've also got some links to the Why Catholic podcast that you should check out in the description and some links to particular episodes which explain this in a little more detail. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.